hello grade 12 welcome back to the channel science therapy hosted by the one and only science therapist and without any further ado let's look at this question that we have here what? okay so we have question seven still on acids and bases 7.1.1 says define the term acid in terms of the Arrhenius theory so we say an acid is a substance that produces hydronium ions hydronium ions which is your h3o plus in wood right so that is our definition for an acid then 7.1.2 says give a reason why sulfuric acid is referred to as a diprotic acid as we've been told here sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid now diprotic acid means it donates two protons right so it donates two protons then 7.2 says the hydrogen carbonate ion can act as both an acid and a base it reacts with water according to the following balanced equation then we can see the balanced equation there 7.2.1 says write down one weight for the underlined phrase so the other underlined phrases it can act as both an acid and a base and then we know that refers to an ampholite so we have ampholite right then 7.2.2 says copy the equation above and indicate the conjugate acid base pair so we're just going to start by copying our equation hco3 minus plus h2o so we are not really much concerned about the phases so h2co3 and then plus oh minus now let's indicate we know that it goes like this so we have our base here going with its conjugate acid and then we have our acid here going with its conjugate base right so we're just going to indicate that this one here let's call it base one and then this will be acid one this will be acid two and then here we will have base two so how are we able to see that this here is a base and this here is an acid it's because looking at this here we can see it was an ion but then it accepted a proton from the h2o and then now uh, it became the h2co3 right so this one was a base because it accepted a proton and this one is an acid because it actually gave away a proton it donated a proton right so that's how uh, you were supposed to figure that one out there okay so now that we've indicated that let's now proceed to the calculation part 7.3 says the laboratory assistant was asked to prepare a 2500 centimeter cube solution of hydrochloric acid with a concentration of 0 0.25 mole per dm cube right then the laboratory had a bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid which had the following written on the label the chemical is hydrochloric acid the density is 1.20 gram per centimeter cube and then the percentage of hydrochloric acid by mass in solution is 36 percent now 7.3.1 says calculate the mass of the hydrochloric uh, acid contained in the two 1500 centimeter cube of a 0 0.25 mole per dm cube solution now we know that the formulas that we would have to use if we are given the concentration is either c is equals to n over v or c is equals to m over m times v now it's a matter of 
what are we trying to calculate? Are we trying to calculate the number of moles or are we trying to calculate the mass? Now, looking at this one, we can see we are trying to calculate the mass. So uh, the most suitable formula to use is obviously that one there. So now let's calculate. We have C is equals to M over M times V. So our concentration, 0 0.25. And then uh, we have mass, the molar mass, the molar mass of hydrochloric acid will obviously be a HCl. Our hydrogen is only one, and then chlorine is 35.5. So when we add those ones together, we get 36.5 uh, grams per mole, right? So we're just going to go here and substitute on our molar mass, 35.5. But then the volume, remember, we can't use 2,500 centimeter cube. We need to still divide this by 1,000, right? So dividing this by 1,000, we have 2.5, right? Now, at this point, we can just cross multiply all of this. And then our mass will be 0 0.25 multiplied by all of that will be 22.8125. Grams, right? So that's it. Okay, uh, we have seven point three point two. It says fifty centimeter cube of the zero point two five mole dm cube uh, HCl solution is used to neutralize twenty centimeter cube of a so of sodium carbonate solution. So from reading the statement, we can tell that this is a titration reaction because uh, we are told that the acid will neutralize the base. So that only happens if we are performing a titration reaction, right? And also another confirmation, we are given two volumes and then we are given one concentration. So our HCl solution is uh, what we call the, the standard solution because this is the solution with a known concentration. So the formula that we have to use for the titration is C A V A over C B V B is equals to N A over N B. Right now, what is the concentration of the acid? We are told that it is 0 0.25, and then the volume 50 centimeter cube. You will remember that we did specify that on this particular formula here, it is not necessary for you to convert these ones to dm cube because we have two volumes and then eventually the SI units will just cancel out. So we have the volume of the base. We are told it's 20 centimeter cube. And then now when it comes to this ones, we are not required to calculate the number of moles, but we are just using the molar ratios. So what is the molar ratio of the acid? It's two. And then what is the molar ratio of the base? It's only one, right? Now to calculate, just simply need to do our maths. So we have a 0 0.25 multiplied by 50. And then we're just gonna take all of this to our denominator, two multiplied by 20. Now you simply just press your calculator, um right? Then when you punch that, it becomes 0 0.31255 mole per dm cube. Then obviously, if you choose to round off to two decimal places, that's 0 0.31, right? Okay, nice. Then we have the last question for two marks. It says, name a suitable indicator that can be used for this titration. See now, there's the word for this titration. Give a reason for the answer, right? Okay, so now going back to the uh, balanced equation, we know that HCl is what we refer to as a strong acid. And then the sodium carbonate here is what we refer to as a weak base. Now, the indicator from grade 11 uh, that we were told to use whenever we are reacting a strong acid and a weak base, you will remember that it is methyl orange, right? So you still need to brush up on your grade 11 uh, acids and bases because this is just conceptual. So methyl orange, and then the reason it's because strong 
acid reacts with weak base. So that's it. So strong acid reacts with weak base. And that's the reason we are using the indicator bethyl orange. So that's it for our lesson. Um, all of that for a total. All of that for a total of 16 marks. So please press the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please smash that subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team. Oh, 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 oh,